So far we have been mostly doing problems with numbers to work with. But on the AP exam, it is not uncommon to see problems without numbers. So let's do another problem like that. Water comes out of the nozzle on level ground at the speed of VO. If the nozzle is pointed at an angle theta above the horizontal, how far away does the water beam hit the ground? No numbers are given, but we will be treating VO and the theta as given and carry out our calculations same as usual. By the way, in a problem like this, we would keep G as G without plugging in the 9.8 or 10. So your answer will be in terms of VO, theta, and G. Therefore, you will not need your calculator at all. See if you can solve this problem. So again, we're separating the horizontal and vertical side. For the slanted velocity, we'll have to find the components. So we have to make this rectangle again. And this is the horizontal component and the vertical component. So the horizontal component of the velocity, the initial velocity, is uh, adjacent to the angle which is related to cosine. So the VOX will be the slanted velocity, the hypotenuse times cosine. So this is VO times cosine theta. The vertical component is the same as the opposite side. So the vertical component is the, cos is the sine component. Again, on the vertical side, we know acceleration is negative g, and we're just going to keep g as g. Now, we want the displacement in the horizontal direction, so we want the delta x. The only equation we need for the horizontal side is delta x equals to v times t. We already know the velocity, that is vo times cosine theta, but we'll need the time. We don't have the time, so we have to go to the vertical side to find the time. And you have two choices. You can go all the way and find the total time, or you can go to the maximum height and then double the time because it's a symmetric situation. I'm just going to find the time to the maximum height first. If I go to the maximum height, the final velocity is zero. No displacement, so I can use the v equals to vo plus at to find the time. So 0 equals to vo sine theta plus acceleration times the time. If I move this one over, I have gt equals to this. And that means the time will be vo sine theta divided by g. Now this is the time to the maximum height. So if I go up and down, the time would be, this is the total time is twice that much, twice the VO sine theta divided by G. And that's the time I'm going to use for this side, twice the VO sine theta divided by G. So this gives me twice the VO squared sine theta times cosine theta divided by g. And this is how far away the water beam hits the ground. As you can see, if you don't have numbers to work with, you can still carry out all the calculations as usual. It's just that your answer can look pretty big, like this. But the good thing is, you don't need a calculator. You don't have to. But if you wish to, you can also simplify this answer. There's a trig equation that is uh, twice the sine theta times cosine theta equals to sine 2 theta. So that means uh, I can replace 2 sine theta times cosine theta with uh, sine 2 theta. That will make it VO squared times sine 2 theta divided by G. Don't worry, I don't think you need to memorize this trig equation for the AP Physics exam, although this allows you a convenient way to answer the following question. 
at what angle above the horizontal should you point the nozzle in order for the water to land as far away as possible without changing the initial speed VO. Since VO stays the same, G doesn't change, that means to maximize the delta x, we have to maximize the sine 2 theta. So, delta x is a maximum when the sine 2 theta is a maximum. And the sine value has a maximum of 1, and that happens at sine 90 degrees, which means 2 theta has to equal to 90 degrees, which means when the nozzle points, at 45 degree angle above the horizontal. Water is going to land the farthest away. Now let me go outside and show you the water demo. So you saw that as I increased the angle of the nozzle above the horizontal, the water landed farther away until about 45 degrees. Beyond that angle, water began to land closer as the angle continued to increase. When water is shot at a small angle above the horizontal, the water did not go very far because uh, although this slanted initial velocity has a large horizontal component, it has a small vertical initial velocity. It's like tossing something upward at a slow speed. It goes up a little and then quickly come back down. So the water did not get to stay in the air for long. To get the water to land farther away, you will need a larger angle. So the water would stay in the air for longer. Of course, that is not without sacrificing the horizontal velocity. Because remember, the horizontal displacement is delta x equals to the horizontal velocity times time. So beyond 45 degrees, if you keep increasing the angle, the horizontal velocity decreases so much that even though the water gets to stay in the air for longer, but its delta x would still decrease. Of course, this 45 degree rule will have to be adjusted according to our real life situations because our calculations was only for water landing at exactly the same height as the initial height and in the absence of air resistance.